I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm Greg Ovens. And this is the 30 Day Survival Challenge, Canadian Rocky. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. The 30 Day Survival Challenge Season 2 Canadian Rockies has been brought to you in part by Dr. Squatch Soap, Hidden Woodsman Gear, Go Prepared Survival, Outdoor Vitals, Wazoo Survival Gear, Simple Shot Shooting Sports, and Grim Workshop. Check out the link in the description below for the gear video of the 30 Day Survival Challenge. Good morning. It is day 15. We're halfway there, but we gotta get ourselves some fish. So it's a little bit early. Gonna uh, get down there hopefully before the sun hits the water and see if that helps. Catch some early morning fish. Let's do it. Hmm. Greg stirring.
All right, if you haven't guessed it already, I'm making a landing net so I can land my fish safely without losing something by the shore. One of my biggest pet peeves is watching a survival show or watching somebody uh, boat hoist a fish, mainly meaning they just yarn it up and out of the water while it's hooked and then watching it fall off at the last second, bouncing off the side of the boat and back into the water or you know the bank and then slipping away from them and they lose the fish. I, I hate seeing that. And when we're in a survival situation, we can't afford to be losing too many fish. We need the calories. So the landing net is going to be an essential part of making sure that I'm landing as many as possible. Everything you've seen so far and the finishing of this net needle and loading it with string was actually done on day 14 and I finish it today so I can fish it. I just wanted to make sure it was all in one video so people showing up and they want to watch and learn can watch it without having to watch multiple videos. The net needle I'm making here is a little bit more like the Native Americans would build for their nets. It's open at both ends and the line is simply wrapped around it. Traditionally modern net needles like they use today for fixing and mending nets all around the world looks like this but I found that for what I'm doing on the scale of which I'm doing it this seems to work a lot faster because it takes less time to load up and it takes less time to unload the line while you're tying your net knots and as complicated as nets look they're actually fairly easy to make I'll put a link in the description below to a blog post on my website with some resources there, pictures, easily referenceable stuff, and some YouTube videos that'll help you get started on your own net making adventure. Now that my heat bent hoop is ready, it's just a matter of a clove hitch and a half hitch to lock that knot in place. This tarred bank line makes all the difference for building something like this. The um, Just a straight nylon line, the knots actually tend to come undone and you'll have to do like a double, a, a double net knot. I've made one before out of paracord and I got halfway done with the net and all the knots were coming undone. It was a mess until you double knot them or use a warm coal to heat the net knots so that they lock up because you don't want them to come undone and then your net is just sloppy and falling all apart on you. Most people when they're building nets use a stick for consistency so their loops all end up being the same and their net opening holes are very consistent and all the same. I find that for something like this at least uh, it works great just to use your fingers. I use four fingers and it creates a loop of a certain size and it's more than consistent enough to make a landing net and even a hammock if you want to just work on something like that in your lap while you're sitting around the fire you can whip something like this out without getting all complicated truly the only difficult thing about tying a net knot and making a net is remembering how to tie the net knot after you have uh, been you know six months or a year since the last time you made one <laughs> that's what uh, kind of happened to me here it took me like 15 minutes to try different things to remember it and then it's just a matter of once you've tied one or two, your fingers just start doing it. Now, what you see me tying here is a net knot, and I'm tying it in the fashion that I'm using the, the spool, um, my net needle, as almost like a, a needle and thread, the way I'm threading it through the different loops. And a lot of people use their net needle. They poke it through once, and then they hold it in place, and then they toss the line over the end of it and pull their net knot tight. I, I found that it was actually easier to just thread the net needle in, out, over, under, until I've tied my net knot. And then the only other complication is simply, um, unlike building a net on a straight line where you're just standing in front of a line and walking back and forth, tying this net knot, you know, consistently time and time again, is when you flip your net like this one around and you're trying to tie it in your lap, finding the right position. And then like, wait a minute, I was going left to right before, but because I flipped it over, I'm going to go right to left. Or if you turn it upside down and you're actually building your net up from the ground, like I end up doing here, instead of down from hanging above, you just got to wrap your mind around that for a second. But I swear it's the easiest thing in the world. As soon as you've done one or two knots, it's like your fingers just take over and they just start doing it. Anybody could do this. It's really easy and it's really fun to do, kind of like knitting, which I have done in the past. That orange hat I'm always wearing is something I designed and knit myself. You can do it too. I know it looks like I have lots of uh, already predestined skills, and 
but uh, anybody can do this stuff. There we go. Net is done. All right, I like it. It's a good size net. Should be good for the good size fish. That'll do. There we go. All right. Oop. A couple nubs down here. I gotta shave off so I don't cut my hands when using it. But uh, woohoo! Let's go join Greg. See what the fishuation is today. <laughs> We are here, and as I was coming around the corner, Greg saw me. He's over there on the other side. He's on his way over or something. I think he caught a fish. Hopefully today is a better day for fishing, because it's definitely not a better day for weather, but it's a beautiful day in the Rockies. Whoa! What are you gonna do? I gotta put my rain cover on this camera. <laughs> That's what I gotta do. Oh, put a rain cover on me. Hey, bay. tried this freebie lure and it's a little rubber trout with a brass spinner. It's another one I found stuck to a log one day. Maybe uh, with a worm on there. Again. You land one? Well, I landed one and lost two and lost two lures. It keeps breaking this. You know, I had one on probably eight pounder. Snaps the line, away she goes. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. Doesn't that turn out good? Yeah, that looks good. Good, good deep pocket? Yeah. Cool. So, were any of these fish you lost the ones that the net would have saved you, or were they still yeah. out there a ways? Yeah, the one I got him right to shore and then he bolted and snapped the line. The big one. Darn it. I should have made my net faster. <laughs> well, from now on, when we catch a fish, we'll come running to give the other guy a hand if we're close enough, within reason, you know. Yeah, I hope I don't lose any more lures. Oh, you got one. I got one. Grab okay. the net. Grab the net. Don't pull too hard. No, no. Don't pull too hard. It's working. just saying oh I haven't tried this free lure that I found tied to a stick at the bottom of the lake that I hauled in and a one more free lure for the win oh nice yeah, a... okay well that gets us through the day one each now yeah oh I'm glad you didn't lose that one okay that fixed our spirit. wait where is it it's not even hooked anymore well it's a good thing we got it in the wow net. right when you got it in the net it came loose it came loose that's unreal talk about Oh my goodness! Woo! 
Uh, once again, I'm doing better on free lures that I've found pulled up on sticks that I've snagged accidentally than I have anything else. Well, because the people losing them know what to use. Yeah, that is, that's true. <laughs> All right. Ah! Okay, well that fixed my spirits up. But I can't believe it. Finish the net, come down, and then right when we get it in there, it comes unhooked. Yeah. I was worried too, you see how small that hook is on this little guy. Oh, I know. It's a very tiny, tiny lure. That's a very, very small, small lure and a very small hook, so. So this is the second lure that I found at home in Maine and brought with me on the trip, and this one has caught me the biggest fish of the trip so far. That was my last worm. Whoa, slippery. But uh, I still had a piece of gill. Actually, I got fresh gill from fresh fish, so maybe I'll grab a piece of that and put that on my hook. Just a little something for a little bit of scent, so when they come in after the the lure, they're like, oh, there's something there worth fighting. Ah, crud. Oh, there's a little lure on there. Woo. And in good shape. Well that stinks. I had to put a new hook on it. The hook somehow broke and uh, the fish got away with it. I can see him thrashing once or twice. That's really uncool. Um, I'm pr pretty disappointed with that. It, I, I looked the whole lure over and it looked like it was really good. So maybe I can catch him again. I seriously doubt it. But uh, man, that stinks. I feel bad about that. But uh, yeah. So, I think I got it figured out though. This lure, put some worm on here. I found worms under the rocks. Every fifth rock you turn over seems to have one worm. So, I'm gonna re-rig it, stop saying so, and see if I can catch another fish so we can eat. <laughs> it's like, as soon as 12 o'clock rolls around, as soon as 12 o'clock rolls around or something, they just stop biting. It's like, uh, I'm sorry, we're on lunch break. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Let's see what this guy is eating. Mostly a belly full of shrimp. I don't see anything bigger. Well, no wonder they don't want to bite our lures. They're full on uh, this freshwater shrimps in here. All right, let's go see if the Greg's got the fire going. Hate to leave that one with a hook in him, but maybe, maybe I can catch him tomorrow. Hello. Any more? Oh, nice. You made a chair and everything. Oh, I gotta do something just to try to dry out here. Yeah. Yeah, I had one, another one on the line. Yeah. And then uh, the hook broke off the lure. The hook broke. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Royally. I'm disappointed when I uh, lost my stuff. Yeah. I, yeah, I put a new hook on it and tried some more and they just weren't biting. It's like, as soon as noon, noon time, they're like, oh, we're on lunch break. Yeah, I think a guy's got to get there early. Yeah. Because uh, in the morning, I lost the two. Yeah. Um, no, I, the one that I got is the first one I caught. And then the next one broke the hook or broke the line. And then, and then I had some followers after the two got away. 
but it seems like there's just that or that um, curtain that they bite. Yeah, it's just noon. You know, it just it, it's like boom, we're done. We're, we're like they had lunch early, they're done. And it's like yeah. So I mean, yeah. if a guy can get there even a little earlier, it might might work. But yeah. At least we have one fish each. That's good. Yeah. Because uh, well, at least you're not soaked like a drowned rat. Uh, wow, well, we've just been subjected to this rain non-stop for two weeks. We, we haven't had a break, really. So. <sighs> That's how I feel. <sighs> it's a little better. Well. We thought we'd need wool clothes this time. <laughs> I know. I well, this one's pretty thin, so it's kind of nice. It's like a... Mm -hmm. Came from England. Now the rest of me is dry except for my boots. Darn boots. Greg's got his off. His finally soaked through. He's been bragging this whole time about how wonderful they are and how well, they don't... We're good. <laughs> but nothing... It's, it's hard to, for almost anything to stand up against just like day in awesome. and day out of rain and wet foilage i mean we could wear mud boots you know or something some boots would work yeah but like they're a pain in the neck to hike and walk in oh, yeah. so i don't even feel like trying to you know do up with my fish because it's just like it's work everything's working this weather and yeah. the thing I, is we're we're getting weaker not stronger yeah right? so it's not helping us Let's see breaks and yeah, you did good it's secure oh that's nice this is a good spot right here yeah we're just gonna spend the next 15 days like this right here <laughs> right by the fire just nibbling on a little bit of fish if we get really hungry we'll go down and catch one more and come back and it's gonna be epic is yeah <laughs> you're not gonna want to miss 15 days just sitting by the fire 15 hours of footage of just us sitting by the fire <laughs> We're still standing here warming up, and Greg goes, your pants are melting. Yeah. That stinks. They're starting to bunch up on this side, just from the warmth of the fire. So, they're like a nylon rain pants, and they're the driest thing I've had that keeps the rest of me dry. Fortunately, though, the worst part is when your rain jacket sheds water onto your pants and your crotch and, like, upper legs get all wet. So, if it's my lower pant legs, my fall ravens, they dry out like that in a heartbeat. Just with your own body warmth, as long as it just stops raining. Somehow, somehow broke, 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 broke. And, uh, and the uh, fish got away got with it. Got, got, got away with it. Got, got away with it. I see him thrashing us. That's really, really uncool. uncool. Really uncool. Really uncool. Really I'm pr pretty, pretty disappointed with that. that. It, 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 I, I looked the whole lure over. Well, we warmed up a little bit, but. We thought we'd cook our fish here and go back and get some of our stuff, but it just won't stop raining, so it looks like we're going back. Put more rain gear on, cook in the rain, and go to bed early. I don't know what else to do. If it just won't... It's like to move all of our stuff here in the rain it would just be a bad idea right now. I guess our big problem is we just keep thinking the rain's going to stop. We should have just moved everything over here when it stopped raining for a little bit this morning. We'll get it figured out. One way or another, we'll survive. I will survive. I will survive. I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll be alive. I've got all my life to live. I've got all my love to give. I'll survive. I will survive. Well, we came back. I got my, my hat on, my warm 
woolly hat and uh, I'm done. I'm not cooking my fish. This, uh, if we were established over there, we should have done that this morning. That was a mistake. Instead of finishing the net and going fishing, it was nice catching the fish, but by the time we were done, just the rain, the woods were so wet, everything was so wet. Um, I guess we kind of screwed up there a little bit. But tomorrow, it's another day, new day. It's still early. I'm going to bed. I'll eat my fish then. I'm not going to sit out there and get wet and try to cook a fish. And uh, we just were too wet and just spent hours trying to warm up at our uh, our new spot and uh and then we're like let's go back here and uh cook the fish by the time we got here we're both like no i'd rather be warm and snuggled in my hammock than uh than cook a fish so to bed to bed early bed early to rise maybe and catch another fish have a big fish for breakfast and hopefully this rain can stop if not we're just going to have to get on with construction and get on with our life one way or another anyway. So I will see you guys in the next one. Fowler out.